what a start it was for Germany. What a player he is, by the way. You're right. Uh, roared on by their home crowd. Could this be the start of their resurgence at major tournaments? Let's run through a few of the favourites uh, with Chris Boyd, who joins us uh, up at the big screen now. Let, let's talk about Germany then, Chris. Yes. I mean, they, they, you're probably wishing we don't want to have to talk about this particular game. But has your opinion of them changed after last night? Yes. Um, you know, I think, obviously, they were... I mean, Germany and home soil, they're going to be very difficult anyway, but um, the way they went about that game last night, listen, I know Scotland, were, they were poor. Scotland were very poor, but that front four, um, Musiala, um, especially, I thought, was, was excellent. Um, Kai, Hav Kav Kai Havertz, his movement was was phenomenal, and that allowed you know the wide players to, to do it. Uh, Vitz as well, the, the, and Gundogan, um, his runs. You know, it was very difficult to stop them, the interchanging, um, the interaction. Tony Cruz can pick a pass. I, mean, I think he's, it was 101 passes out of 102. Was completed. What happened to the one that got away? Um, it was a bad pass. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I do, especially in home soil, they are, they'll be in the, the reckon, um, you know, with it, along with, you know, another four or five. I think the tournament's pretty open, though. I do. I mean, I don't. You know, it's easy to sit here and say there's there's uh, there's favourites, and there obviously there is. But I think there's a good five or six that will find their chances of winning it. Yeah. So Germany have got a young coach. They've got those two young players that we talked about. They've got some old guard in there as well. What about France under Didier Deschamps? They've been there. They've done it in yeah. these major tournaments. They've got a star-studded lineup as well. How do you rate them? Yeah. I mean, I, I think when you look at um, France in, in terms of the, I mean, anybody with Kylian Mbappe at the top end of the pitch is going to cause problems uh, to anyone. His pace, and not only that, I mean, they've They've got creativity behind them. Um, they've been there, they've done it. Um, the only thing is, the French, they must be due for a fallout in camp. They've been, they've been, they've, they've, they've been <laughs> OK recently. They've, they've been OK recently. But, um, you know, yeah, they're, they're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with as well, and they've showed that for a number of years now. And Mbappe, I mean, just how important is he to them, given what he's done in, in, in major championships prior? Huge. Um, you know, in terms of... I mean, he's finishing there, but, you know, you kind of get the feeling that he's... He's, um, he's obviously leaving PSG, he's going to Real Madrid, he's going to have to go and prove himself again. Um, but this, you know, this tournament allows everybody to, to see exactly how good he is. We've seen it in the World Cup, we've seen it in the Euros. He's, uh, he's excellent and, um, you know, he'll want, to, he'll want to kick on. He'll want to... I mean, I think when you've, you know, you've scored the goals that you've scored, you, you, want to, you want to be a top goal scorer at World Cups, you want to be the top goal scorer in European Championships, that will be in his mind. Um, you know, they become selfish and, yes, the team, it's important, but, you know, they, they've got to have that um, tunnel vision as players to, to go and achieve their goals as well. And if, if he does that, um, you know, France will get a great opportunity of winning it as well. Yeah, they recalled uh, N'Golo Kante, now 32, yes. playing in Saudi Arabia. He was their shock call-up, so he's the engine room in, in yeah, the midfield. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I think when you, when you look at um, you know, what he brings to the team, um, you know, there's, the, the thing with the French is as well, defensively, um, you know, you look at England, there's not probably much between them going forward, um, between the two teams, but I think defensively the French are, are, uh, are strong. Um, and you only need to look at the ones I've left out <laughs> <laughs> to see that. But, um, you know, France are, are definitely, for me, I think the French are favourites. Well, you compare them to England. Let's focus on England. I know you'd love to see England win it, it, win it, Chris. I'd I mean, it. Gareth Southgate's side, <laughs> do you see them going close or do you see them going at least maybe one better than they did last time winning the whole thing? I think they'll do the usual, maybe semi-finals and that'll be it. Look <laughs> <laughs> at that smile. Uh, it's the first time he's smiled all morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it as a Scottishman. But... Um, Look, I mean, I, I, when you look at England and the, attack, the, the attacking talent they've got, um, you know, you kind of get the feeling defensively they're not where they've been in, in recent um, years. Um, yes, there's a, there's a new generation coming through, and I think that's important for England uh, going forward. But, um, you know, you can't help but think, you know, he, he goes into every tournament, every time he pulls on an England jersey, um, you know, he seems to get stick Harry Maguire, but you get the feeling he's going to be a huge miss here. Not only on the pitch, but his presence around the, the training uh, camp as well. Um, you know, Gareth Southgate's left a few of his experienced players out, which, you know, will be, you know, he'll have, he'll have to deal with the, uh, that if it doesn't go to plan. And I'm sure people will, will um, you know, there'll be questions asked of him, but um, he's felt as if that's the right decision. Um, it gives England the best opportunity to go and be successful here. But, you know, going forward, there is no doubt England's as good as anybody in this tournament. I keep hearing people saying Portugal are dark horses, and you think, how could a team that have got elite talent in almost every position be a dark horse? No, I mean, I, I, you're right. I don't, I don't think they're dark horses. I think they're serious contenders. Um, you know, it, it might suit them going under the radar a little bit, um, but, you know, when you've got somebody um, like Cristiano Ronaldo, yes, it might be the latter uh, stages of his career, but, you know, we've seen the other night there against 
um, the Republic of Ireland. His finishing is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, both feet as well. Um, you know, his head and ability. Um, he's just, he's just, he, he was his class, doesn't he? Um, and they, you know, you look at their squad, um, they will, you know, there'll not be a lot of teams and want to face them, a lot of nations want to face them um, because they've, they've shown before as well that they can go there and they can win uh, tournaments. So, um, yeah. Roberto Martinez will fancy his chances as well. Fielding. Now, after last night's opener, there are three Euros games today for the first time this summer. I love this time of year. First up <laughs> is the other game in Scotland's group, so I'm sure Chris Boyd will be very interested. Uh, Chris, still with us. What do you think Scotland fans will want to see from game two in their group? Well, I draw. Um, at least then there's, there's, there's one not getting away from me. But I've got a funny feeling I think Hungary will beat Switzerland today. Um, you know, I think that... You know, Switzerland, they've had a golden generation as such, um, but you kind of get the feeling it's coming to an end. Um, you know, they, they are getting older, but defensively, Fabian Shea, uh, Akanji, um, some are in goals as well. They have still got experience in there, Granit Xhaka in the middle of the pitch. Um, you know, they've got experience that know how to get um, over the line. So it will be, it'll be a difficult game, but you just, you know, f for Hungary, I think they've, they've um, you know, they seem to be, um, they're a team that, all together as such, um, you know, there's not really any superstars um, in there, um, similar to what we thought Scotland were, um, but it just wasn't to be. But, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it, but, but it'll be a good game today. Um, that, that's one thing about it. Um, I think both teams will, will sense an opportunity if they can win this game. It gives them a, a great opportunity to get into the knockout stages. OK, that's uh, Group A, Chris. Group B, we spoke about Spain a short while ago. They uh, take on... Yeah. Croatia, who always seem to do well in, in recent times in yeah. major tournaments. What sort of challenge will they pose for Spain? Well, I mean, watch the, the Croatia game um, against Portugal last week as well. And yeah, they might be still be on, but that midfield three, um, they're, they're strong in there. Um, you know, you look at Croatia, every tournament they turn up, they just seem to, cl to click. Um, but, you know, the Spanish will be hoping to go off to a good start as well. I mean, they've got some young, exciting players in there that, um, you know, you feel as if... If they click as well, they'll be another one that'll fancy their chances to win the tournament. Um, but again, it's an opening game that might be a little bit cagey. Um, but, you know, I, I do think Spain maybe just edge that one. A couple of really exciting teenagers from Barcelona, yes. Lamina Mal and Pau Cabazzi. It's great to see these young stars coming through on the global stage. Well, we're not surprised that they come through at Barcelona, aren't you? I mean, it's just <laughs> a conveyor belt. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I think when you look at... Um, it, They've got experience in the squad as well. Um, but, you know, there's one thing about these big nations. They always seem to integrate, you know, a few youngsters at a time and then all of a sudden they kick on for the next tournament. That'll be the World Cup and then the Euros after that. Um, you know, they always seem to get them in the squad and prepare them. Um, and, you know, you mean the has been excellent for, for Barcelona. Came through, what, 16-year-old? Yeah. Unbelievable. Scoring goals. Unbelievable. But while we're talking, about, we're talking about Spain, it's worth remembering that Scotland beat Spain at Hamden. They yes. were Scott McTominay. So if the Scots need any kind of Philip and bounce back ability, and, you know, in a kind of shot in the arm, yeah. it's worth remembering that that wasn't that long ago. No, I mean, I think, you know, the start of the qualifying campaign for Scotland was excellent. There's no getting away from it. Um, you know, recent months, it's not been great. Um, but, you know, I think for a period of time, friendlies in Scotland haven't really got on um, and we haven't performed in them. So, yeah, yes, you can look at that. But going into last night's game, I think from 2021, only Portugal had picked up more victories than, uh, than, than Scotland. Um, you know, what, 15 from 21 um, competitive games. So, I mean, it was, it was, um, it was good going. Um, but, listen, I think, you know, looking at it now, the Nations League, you're up a level. Um, you know, you're, you're at, you qualify for major tournaments. You're coming up against the better teams. You're going to have to um, improve yourselves. And that's where Scotland need to get to in the next few games. So the other game to, to round off today is also in that Group B, which seems to be the toughest group. Yeah. You've got, we've already spoken about Spain, Croatia, Italy against Albania rounding things off. Albania are in a tough spot in that group. Yeah, they are. Um, but again, you know, you look at them, you know, they come through qualifying really well. Um, you know, but the Italians, you know, similar to the Germans as well, you just feel as if once they get to major tournaments, they always seem to do well. Um, I mean, even last time, they were underdogs and they find a way to go and win uh, tournaments. Um, you look at Italian football as well. I mean, this season it was very good. You know, their teams in Europe were very good. Um, you know, there's a lot of them involved in the squads. There, they'll go, to, they'll go into this um, confident, the holders. Um, but, you know, you, you'd imagine, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough game, but I think Italy will come out on top in that one. OK, Chris, we're going to leave it there. Thanks very that much. Go lick the wounds. Safe journey back. <laughs> we'll see you for games two and three for Scotland. Well, I've got a smile on my face. <laughs> Hopefully um, that will go better.